Snap chip technology was developed in the laboratory of Alex Rothenberg at the University of Chicago, and it was a way to normalize your chip experiments or calibrate them when you're looking at histone modification specifically. And so this was a great way to be able to actually compare one chip experiment next to another when you're examining different histone modifications. EpiCypher has commercialized snap chip spiking controls as a way, again, to normalize chip experiments, but they've also really discovered some interesting information about how antibody performance is in chip experiments using this technology. Specifically, the snap chip technology is a panel of recombinant nucleosomes, each containing a histone modification, along with a unique barcoded DNA wrapped around the nucleosome. This panel of recombinant nucleosomes is spiked into your normal chip workflow. And then after immunoprecipitation, washes, um, eluding the DNA, you perform qPCR as you would normally with a chip experiment. But this using those unique barcodes, you can see how well is my antibody pulling down the um, target I'm interested in or histone modification that I'm interested in. So this gives you information about your antibody um, efficiency for pull down, as well as is my antibody pulling down any of the other modifications in the panel? So is it cross reacting with another modification, which is essential to know when you're trying to do a chip experiment. Snap chip spikins again focus on histone modifications. Knockout and knockdown are really not feasible for looking at histone modification antibody specificity. Additionally, cell treatment becomes incredibly challenging because the histones contain multiple modifications of acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation. So cell treatments will affect more than one modification and not give you information about is my antibody specific for a very specific modification. Peptide array has really become the gold standard in recent years for looking at antibody specificity. The peptide array works by um, spotting many peptides on an array and challenge the antibody. Is it recognizing the modification I'm interested in? Is it cross And is it cross-reacting with any other modifications? There have though been a number of hints in the literature that that may not correlate when you're looking at specificity in IP. And most recently, there's a paper from Shaw et al. in 2018 in Molecular Cell that uses um, Alex Rothenberg's original ICE chip that SNAP chip is based on and finds that there's no correlation between specificity in ICE chip and specificity in peptide array. So some antibodies are specific in both, whereas others are specific in only one of these applications. And so I'm really a fan of SNAP chip for looking specifically at chip specificity, as that is a way to mimic exactly the experiment you're looking at, where you're mimicking a chip experiment to look at specificity of your antibody. In a chip experiment, you're asking, where is my target of interest in the genome? Where does it reside? Does it reside in transcriptional start sites? Does it reside in silenced regions or across the entire genome or in very discrete places? So it's very important that your antibody is specific because with this information, you're assigning roles for the target. And in this case, you're assigning roles for the histone modification. I mentioned that paper Shaw et al from 2018, where the, and they looked at quite a few H3K4 antibodies, and particularly they found that H3K4 trimethyl antibodies often cross-react with H3K4 dimethyl antibodies. And in fact, what they found was there's been this questionable role about H3K4 trimethyl as an enhancer, and that questionable role might actually be that we were looking at cross-reaction of H3K4 dimethyl, so that there may have been a role misassigned to H3K4 trimethyl based on a lack of antibody specificity. So this is an example of why you really need to make sure your antibody is specific to the modification it's intended for.
Snap chip spikins really bring a new robustness to your chip experiment when you're looking at histone PTMs. It gives information about how well your antibody is pulling down the modification you're interested in and is it pulling down any other modifications within the panel, meaning is there any cross-reactivity you should be concerned about. Additionally, this snap chip spikins can be used as a normalization control so you can really start comparing chip experiments and figure out are there differences in biology going on when you're looking at perhaps a mutation or different cell treatments and are there really changes in the uh, histone modifications um, locations in the genome. Absolutely not. Peptide arrays are a fantastic way to screen a lot of modifications at once. Additionally, it gives information about whether your antibody's rec ability to recognize the modification of interest is affected by neighboring modifications. The problem with peptide array is it does not correlate well with specificity in CHIP. So peptide array is very likely the best method for verifying your antibody specificity when you're doing a denaturing application such as Western blot. But snap chip is the ideal verification for um, determining specificity of your antibody when you're doing an IP-based application. CHIP is a really complicated experiment. There are many steps from how you grow your cells to lysine to how you fragment the chromatin your antibody choice, your wash conditions. So as you can imagine, there's many places where things can go awry. Um, I can give a shameless plug for a webinar that we've done at Thermo Fisher about five steps to successful um, chip experiments. Additionally, there's a plenty of other protocols out there and webinars to look at as well for getting you prepared for what to think about when you're planning your chip experiment. Antibody selection is absolutely essential for doing chip for getting best results for a chip experiment. So you want to make sure your antibody is as specific as possible. For histone modifications, I highly, highly encourage minimally you use a SNAP chip verified antibody and even use the SNAP chip spike in panels themselves when you're doing the experiment. And that way you can also reassure yourself the antibody is specific and use that as a normalization control. If, however, you're not looking at a histone modification, there's other ways to determine if your antibody is specific. Um, potentially cell treatment, a knockout or knockdown experiment will help confirm specificity. Additionally, you want to ensure for a CHIP experiment that you're seeing where you expect enrichment of your target of interest in the genome as well as depletion. This, of course, requires a priori knowledge of where your target should be in the genome, which adds another complication, especially if you're looking at something novel. Um, so chip experiments, they're, they're challenging. There's lots of steps, but um, antibody selection is one of those key things to look for when planning your chip experiment.